The truth is, it's not me who should be sitting in front of you. No, no. Who is it then, John? The banks, the lenders. No, no, Mike, this needs to be said. The credit card companies, all of them, who lure you in with their promises and their fine words. Oh, they're your best friend when you're borrowing and paying sky high interest rates, but if they then decide that they want their money back, oh, they're not so friendly then, are they? No. And then if you can't instantly deliver, they will take you down without a second thought. They will destroy you and everything you have worked for your entire life without a second thought. So, it's them who should be in the dock, not me. So it was all about the money. It became about that after I came back. It wasn't that at the start. When you first went missing? Yes. OK. So what was it about, John, at the start? Well, obviously, I can't remember that, can I? OK, so you're still sticking to the story that you have amnesia? I do. I did. I did. From when to when? From a holiday in June 2000 till about mid-2003. OK, so just after all the money was paid out? Yes. Right. That's lucky. And, and, and I'd like to add that that money was claimed in good faith by Anne. They can't claim that back, I'm afraid. Those are their own rules. And so you, you don't remember anything about what happened on the day you went missing? Absolutely not. But you do remember that you definitely didn't plot to fake your own death for financial gain. No comment. OK. OK, I am now showing the suspect exhibit JAW001, which is the front cover of today's Daily Mirror, features a quote from your wife, Anne, taken from an interview she gave to a journalist just yesterday. And it simply reads, John never had amnesia. So, um, what do you make of that then, John? Well, if I were you, gents, I wouldn't listen to a word she says. <laughs> I never have. It's very simple. We stick her in one room, stick him in another, and we play them off. Bottom line, Anne, the more honest you are with us, the more information you can give us about what actually happened to you, the quicker we'll have all this sorted. OK? Yes. Good. And so we are interviewing her at the same time as speaking to you, which means any answers you give us, we'll be checking with her to see if they tally up and vice versa. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Although, do bear in mind that Anne does not have a very sophisticated grasp of financial matters. Right. Just the one brain cell, you see. Your wife, 34 years. Tell me about it. Would <laughs> you like me to repeat the question, Anne? No, I heard the question. When I started the insurance claim, I still believed him to be dead. You took quite a long time to answer that. But she did. I'm just wondering why you hesitated. She's answered the question. Can you move on, please? Just remember, Anne, this is your interview. This is your chance to tell us your side of things. He turned up halfway through. It's not true. I turned up after they'd been paid out. I thought you said you couldn't remember when you turned up. The specific month, I said. But you can specifically remember that it was after the claim was settled. Yes. Uh -huh. Which month was the claim settled then? Ah, nice try. I don't remember. This isn't the yes-no game, John. Your wife has already told us that you never had amnesia. She's mistaken. Perhaps she's forgotten. 
Yes, he told me he'd faked the whole thing. His disappearance? Yes. For financial reasons? Yes. Did he tell you where he'd been? No, round and about, he said. <laughs> For over a year? Y yes. Okay. But why didn't you go straight to the police at that point? He said if we went to the police, we'd have to pay the insurance money back immediately and then we'd be back where we'd started. Facing bankruptcy? Yes. So what was his plan at this point? For me to sell all the other houses and then hand himself in when we were in a position to pay the money back. OK, and how's that plan going? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I'm not with you. Why else do you think I returned? I don't know, why did you? To pay the money back. Oh, so you've made contacts with the insurance companies then? Well, I would have if you hadn't arrested me. So it's, it's our fault. We spoiled your plan. You and the press. Oh, well, apologies. Accepted. Can I just ask, though, John, if your plan was to sell all your properties with the intention of paying the money back when you got straight, why did you move to Panama? No comment. And buy a flat there? No comment. And a plot of land? No comment. Well, Anne, why did you just go along with it? Why didn't you tell him that it was wrong and dishonest? I should have, and... I should have told the boys at that point, but he said if I went to the police, he'd tell them I was in it from the start. You were an adult. You could have refused. And I bitterly regret my decision, but he was hard to resist. John was very forceful. And uh, why, uh, why don't you just tell us the truth? You were in on it from the start, weren't you? She's answered the question. Can you move on, please? So the uh, life insurance policies that you took out just three months before you went missing, is that date relevant, John? But you tell me. No, you tell me. That's how this works. Is that date relevant? No. No? So it's pure coincidence that you took out a life insurance policy in December 2001, which then allowed your wife to make a very large claim just 12 weeks later. Yes. And is it also a coincidence that on a computer hard drive, taken from your house soon after your disappearance, we've since found a downloaded file titled Missing Persons and Police Investigations. Well, one of the boys must have downloaded that. Yeah, it, it was dated a month before you went missing, John. Fair play. That's a tricky one. OK, I am now showing an Exhibit AD01, which is a copy of a library card registered at Hartlepool Library in the name of John Jones. And can you tell me who you see on that photo? It's John. Except this fella has a beard. I presume you can grow a beard? Yes. OK, so is that you, but with a beard? Maybe. John, I'm just asking if you can identify yourself. No, come. OK, well, perhaps you can read two things out for me then. The date it was issued and the address. 22nd of April, 2002. Address number four, the cliff, Seaton Carew. OK. So just four weeks after you went missing, a man who looked very much like you up, oh, yeah, with a beard, yeah. Applies for a library card and gives your home address. But this man's called John Jones. Come on, man. He was living at number four from day one, wasn't he? No. And you knew from day one? I didn't. Were your boys in on it too? No, absolutely not. Because our economic crime unit is finding all sorts of things. What things? Money transfers to Mark and Anthony, fake property sales to Mark, Basically, money laundering, very serious offences. That was just an inheritance tax thing, please. They never knew anything about any of this, please. 
So it's interesting how upset you're getting. And I tell you, I, I do not want to have to bring your lads in. Please don't. The best way to head that off is for you to tell us the whole truth. You were in on it from the start, weren't you? No. And you knew John was perfectly fine when you dialed 999 and said he was missing. In fact, I'm surprised the attending officer didn't see wet footprints going up the stairs. Am I right? No comment. Okay. Yes. I faked it all.